Hello my fellow hunters The Monster Hunter team has been releasing gameplay previews of Monster Hunter Wild recently and they also showed off gameplay for all 14 weapons Each weapon has had its own moveset overhauled and greatly improved for Wilds and I'll be going over each weapon and I'll be giving my thoughts on the changes. Since some of these new combos have been carried over from both Icebone and Sunbreak. All of the changes they have done to the weapons has made me more excited for the game. But once I get a hold of the demo, I'll be testing out all the weapons for myself. But when the game comes out, I'll be starting with my main weapon, Switch Axe. There will be more details for Wilds coming soon since uh, they are showing it at Gamescom in Germany. From the 21st till the 25th of this month. Which will show us more gameplay and hopefully we'll get a release date for the demo and also the release date for the actual game I hope once the demo becomes available to the public I will be showcasing each weapon in either solo or squad hunts and I honestly can't wait to play it and so let's jump right into the video and begin with the first weapon the heavy bow gun has slightly been changed with a new feature for the weapon it now has ignition mode you basically regenerate energy over time when you successfully land hits on the monster. You use this energy to use special ammo. I'd assume it's for all special ammo types, but it's one of the coolest features added to the heavy bow gun. Also, this time around, the heavy bow gun has an auto guard function which can be very helpful but we don't know if the heavy bow gun needs weapon mods for the shield just like it did in world heavy bow gun is one of the weapons i used in world and i will be testing it since now we can use it while on a mount and i want to test its new moves that it has in uh, focus mode and also test out its counter so now let's move on to the next weapon The insect glaive remains unchanged for the most part. It has kept the same moveset as it was in Iceborne, except now the hunter hoists the weapon when targeting monster parts to harvest extracts for your buffs. And also the kinsect is now more involved in your attacks and your combos, which is a really good change. While in focus mode, the Insect Glaive has got some new attacks, along with a new backflip that is good for repositioning yourself after doing your combos. The Insect Glaive can also latch onto monsters with aerial attacks and do a new attack which the weapon is piercing the monster's hide and then your hunter spins around while doing this attack. Which honestly looks hilarious but at the same time 
I really like this new attack. I'm just not sure if it's a focus mode only move or not. But the glaive looks a lot of fun, just like it is a nice spawn. In Rise, the insect glaive was butchered. But it now looks like it will just be fun again. And hopefully it will just be as good as it was in Iceborne. I used the Insect Glaive in Iceborne, so I'll most likely be using it again for Wilds. Also, I believe that Mounting is now back, instead of Wyvern Rides, which is good because the mount mechanic is much better. And from the gameplay that we've seen from Insect Glaive, it is most likely back. And um, I just want to test it when I get hold of the demo. So now let's move on to the next weapon. The Great Sword was featured a lot in the trailers leading up to the weapon previews. So the moveset is pretty much the same as previous games, but it has received some changes that it needed. When charging the True Charge Slash, you can now reposition yourself by using the camera which is a change that was needed so now we can change the direction of the true charge slash while performing the attack I brought this up in my wishlist video and I'm glad that this change was made its counter attack was showcased many times in the trailers and it's honestly one of the coolest moves I've seen so far. Its counter knocks the monster back and then the hunter runs up to it dealing two slashes which could be a game changer for great sword mains if used efficiently. The great sword also has a unique attack in focus mode which slashes the monster across its body which looks really intense and satisfying to use. The Great Sword is a weapon that I have used in both Iceborne and Sunbreak, but I am glad that they made some new moves that the Great Sword needed. I'm glad that the strong arm stance wasn't brought back from Sunbreak, since strong arms counter is a bigger risk reward kind of playstyle which can be wasted if it messes up but I am happy with the new counter that it got in wilds once we get a hold of the demo I will test out the great sword since great sword was one of my early mains when I first started Monster to World and I cannot wait to have a go at, at its new counter and so let's move on to the next weapon Gunlance is the first weapon that was shown to have a completely new moveset. Instead of just being a lance that shoots shells, shells have been added into its base moveset. That makes the weapon very different from the past few games. One of its new combos repositions your hunter while the wyvern stake has been impaled into the monster. Basically, they made Gunlance more mobile this time around. It also has 
one of the coolest focus mode moves I've seen which the lance opens up and uses a spinning blade that cuts through the monster this move is cool as hell and makes gun lance stand out the most I played gun lance in base world quite a bit and in rise I didn't really use it that much because it was quite underpowered but I think I will be picking up Gun Lance in Wilds. Gun Lance looks more fun to use now and I am glad that it finally has its own unique moveset and I honestly cannot wait to test it out for myself. The preview for Gun Lance has pretty much shocked the Monster Hunter community in a good way since Gun Lance received a lot of good changes that improves it and gave it more ways to evade attacks by adding the side step into the combos which is more useful rather than just blocking everything like in World. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. The Hunting Horn has been slightly changed. Its moveset has been carried over from Rise which makes Hunting Horn a bit faster when doing its combos and playing its melodies. One of its new moves is the Echo Bubbles which spreads in the area where it was used and grants special effects for anyone who stands in it making it very useful when four people are very close to the monster. Its focus mode move is interesting. It's a better version of Earthshaker from Rise and it just looks badass since the animation makes it look like the hunter is jamming with a guitar. This is honestly one of the best focus mode moves that they've shown. I didn't really play Hunting Horn much in Iceborne or Rise but I think I'll give it another chance but I just need to test it once we get a hold of the demo my friend Ryan is a hunting horn main and he loves the changes that they have done to the hunting horn but I just hope that it would be as good as Iceborne's hunting horn because in Rise, Hunting Horn wasn't as strong as the other weapons. Which is one of the many issues with Monsanto Rise. But they took the speed from Rise, which is the best thing they could have brought over from Rise. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. The longsword mainly remains the same since it's kept the moveset it had in Iceborne but with additional changes. From the looks of it, the Spirit Blade 1 and 2 now act as gap closers from a decent range. But also looks like you move to the right, left or move forward while doing Spirit Blade 1 and 2 which are good changes in the Spirit combo while in Red Gauge it looks like it has a new follow up attack after doing a Spirit Round Slash you now jump and do a slash which possibly is followed up with more attacks but 
While being in red gauge, it gets a new basic attack, which lands multiple hits in very quick succession. All these new combos they added to the longsword are really nice changes, but has greatly expanded its moveset. Its focus mode strike is interesting because when this attack lands, it actually fills up your gauge, which is a nice touch. And the attack itself looks really cool to use. Also, the Ice Spirit Slash and the Spirit Helm Breaker is still here, which is good, but looks like there is a follow up attack after using Helm Breaker which we see two slashes strike the monster. The final new move is somewhat different. You enter a ready stance and when done correctly it looks like it goes into a spirit round slash but the monster wasn't attacking so I don't think it's a counter I have used Longsword in many Monster games. Valor Longsword is my main in Generations Ultimate. And I have used Longsword a lot in Iceborne. So I'll most likely pick up the Longsword in Wilds. And I'm kind of glad that the weapon does not rely too much on counter spam as it did in Sunbreak. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. So, with the preview of Charge Blade, we also get to see a new armor set, and also a sick looking Charge Blade. From just looking at the design, it is possible that we have received a new spider monster. Which is interesting, and means that we have received Temnosurians class monsters in wilds. The charge blade has kept most of its moveset from world. But it seems to have some new combo extenders in Axe Mode which makes it easier to do fire damage on a monster's face for a KO. Charging the files is just the same as it always has been so charging into the shield has been unchanged. When it comes to focus mode the charge blade strike is interesting you start attacking with the small sword which leads into a savage axe mode strike which is awesome because savage axe mode was introduced in iceborn and i'm glad it has returned in wilds since now it's charge blades focus strike and also charge blade gets its own parry move which is a given since all the weapons got a new parry move in wilds. The elemental discharge is still charge blade's strongest attack but now it looks like it has more combos leading up to the discharge but only one combo is shown but the main takeaway is, is that they've gave more combos for Axe Mode which is honestly a good thing since Charge Blade was unchanged in Rise. Charge Blade was the first weapon I ever used in Monster Hunter and it is one of my favorite weapons but I didn't really use it that much in Rise mainly because the charge blade relied too much on counter performance which 
made the uh, playstyle quite boring. But I think I'll be using Charge Blade again for Wilds. Since it looks like to be just as fun as Worlds Charge Blade. And I cannot wait to give the Charge Blade a go in the demo. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. Hammer is one of my main weapons. But I have used in most of the Mosunta games. And this time around, Hammer is now more mobile than it was in Rise. We also get a cool looking hammer which it, which has a brain in the center, which is a design that looks really nice. And also another new armor set. A Plague Doctor armor set which looks interesting. My friend Nicole likes Plague Doctor designs. So she will love this. And I want to know which monster this equipment belongs to. So the hammer's combos have been slightly improved. But also from the looks of it, they have brought over keeping sway from Rise. And has added it into the hammer's base moveset. Which is cool and adds a sidestep into the combo which can reposition your hunter which is a nice change but they also made hammer a bit more mobile which is what hammer needed especially when charging into your big attacks its focus mode strike looks really good since it unleashes a new 5 hit combo that looks cool as hell the hammer also received a parry move, just like the other weapons, which is nice. And also it has got a new full charge attack, which swings above the hunter's head, then comes down on a monster's head after four swings and ends with a big bang slam. Hammer still mostly plays the same as it did in the previous games but now it looks like it's more fluid than ever i love all these new changes for hammer and hammer is going to be my second main weapon in wilds and i want to snag the brain hammer when wilds comes out and so let's move on to the next weapon The light bow gun was recently shown and judging by the preview from the looks of it light bow gun didn't receive any changes or not many of them anyway. The only changes that I can see is that it now shoots faster and you are even more mobile than before. But apart from that, the weapon is not really changed. The only new addition is the parry move and also its focus strike. Apart from them, the weapon just doesn't look fun. I have played Lightbow Gun in Iceborne when I used it for Safi Jiva, but out of that, it's a weapon that I don't really like. So I will not be picking up Lightbow Gun for Wilds. So I am sorry Lightbow Gun mains. And so let's move on to the next weapon.
The sword and shield has slightly been changed. It has pretty much all of its moveset that it has had in the past few games. But they added a tool in the moveset. Some attacks can now reposition the hunter to either side of the monster, which can be good to avoid some attacks. However, when it comes to its focus strike, they pretty much made the falling bash exclusive to the focus strike. So now you climb onto the monster and perform the falling bash, which is uh, cool and all. And uh, it looks like the perfect brush is also here but we don't see the full combo. I have used Sword and Shield in the previous games, but honestly, from this preview, the Sword and Shield has taken a few things from Rise and added a few new moves on top of it. But I think we need to see more gameplay since not all the combos are shown. So, I will be testing Sword and Shield when the demo releases. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. When it comes to bow, I have never used it so Using bow in wilds will be new to me. The bow has received a lot of changes from its Iceborne version, from what I could see. It still has its basic moveset, but also has new moves added into it. The power shot combo now does a 3 attack combo instead of a 2 attack combo back in world. One of its new moves is now an improved version of the Adept Dodge that was introduced in uh, Generations Ultimate which all weapons could use but now it seems like it's only unique to bow for wilds. The bow is now more mobile than it was in world, easily able to dodge a lot of monsters attacks. It also has another new move which allows you to hit the monster with a tracer, which will cause arrows to home in on the monster, which is a nice addition to its moveset. Eventually the tracers will explode if enough time has passed or when you do enough damage to trigger it. Arc Shot is also back, which was always been a useful move for Bow. Its focus strike is somewhat different for Bow, since now we see a huge circle and have to hold it for the arrows to lock on to deal max damage to the monster's weak points. But it also looks like the focus strike can be followed up with a Dragon Piercer for extra damage. Honestly, Bow has a lot of cool moves in its toolkit, which makes the Bow more fun to use. It also seems to have the Aerial Aim Switch skill from Rise, which can be useful on large monsters. It also seems to have a Thousand Dragons in its moveset, or something similar to it. Honestly, with all these changes to bow, I am more interested in picking it up for wilds, but I will need to learn its moveset and test it before I make a set around it. And so, let's move on to the next weapon. The Lance has received some good changes to its moveset. 
you now can reposition yourself after each poke which is one improvement the lance needed for a while and it also got a few new thrusting attacks which expands its moveset but one of the big changes is the upward thrust which possibly can stagger monsters this time around Lance received a perfect guard counter attack that can be triggered very easily and counters with an upward thrust but it can also lead into a shield bash which then ends with another upward thrust this combo is quite smooth but I have also noticed that when you ram your shield into Dashogama's arm it does water damage and KO damage which is a good change because I don't think the shield did these effects in the previous games and during a power guard the lance itself glows so it looks like you get a damage buff from using it its focus strike pretty much rams the shield into Doshogama and pushes forward into a running thrust which honestly, honestly looks fun to pull off but it, it can most likely be followed up with many different attacks I only used Lance briefly in Sunbreak so it's a weapon that I am not familiar with but I will be giving Lance another go in Wilds I just need to test it in the demo and so let's move on to the next weapon Dual Blades are one of my main weapons in three Monster Hunter games and the changes they have done to Dual Blades is interesting but first we get to look at another new armor set turns out this is a remodeled Kongalala set which means Kongalala is in wilds since the male version of the armor looks identical to the old design anyway back to dual blades the moveset remains unchanged for the most part but it has received some changes to demon mode which is uh, it allows you to activate it while on the move instead of just uh, standing there and transforming it is one of the best changes they could have done for dual blades its focus strike has slightly changed dual blades forever now since heavenly blade dance is now exclusive to the focus strike but this time it looks more badass since you do a backflip of the monster's face which is honestly one of the coolest things they could have done for this focus strike and it kind of reminds me of Attack on Titan, to be honest. Dual Blades also has the same Adept dodge that it is in Generations Ultimate. So out of all the weapons, the bow and Dual Blades are the only weapons that have the Adept dodge, rather than a counter, which is awesome, I guess. But I don't think Dual Blades really needed it since it can easily evade without it but it is something that we need to test but it also looks like when you do a perfect dodge the Dual Blades glow blue which is no and I'm not sure if it increases base damage or elemental damage we will have to test it in the demo 
Dual blades is one of my main weapons, and uh, I like all the changes they've d they have done to it. But I just need to test it, since these changes have changed dual blades for good. And for wilds, it will be my third main. And so, let's move on to the final weapon. Now, it's time for my main weapon, Switch Axe. First, we get a good look at a new design for the Switch Axe and the armor set. Both of these designs look amazing, especially the male armor. This armor set is going to be one of the first sets I'm going to obtain mainly because of how it looks. And I'll be definitely getting it as a layered armor. The Switch Axe has kept most of its moveset that it had in Iceborne, but now they added a new combo in Axe Mode, which now has a better reach, which is quite handy for larger monsters. Sword Mode, from the looks of it, still has the same moveset like it always has been but we also get to see which element this switch axe is and it is eyes element which is fitting to the color scheme of the weapon just not sure if it's power file or elemental file its focus strike looks freaking awesome with the constant axe wings but end with a discharge it's just simply amazing and I can't wait to try this out for Switch Axe Switch Axe now has an attack counter which looks insane because once the attack is countered the hunter unleashes three sword strikes which looks similar to second stage morph slash combo I hope second stage morph slash combo is in its moveset and it also looks like some moves from Rise has been carried over. After the counter we see a similar move that acts like the invincible gambit switch skill from Rise and finishes with a heavy slam. It looks like they kept the heavy slam in its base moveset but I also hope that the sidestep and the fade slash are still in its moveset. Not everything is shown in the preview along with both of the finishing discharges. I still want to be able to lash onto the monsters and perform the finishing discharge. I just hope that it's still in the moveset. The final move we get to see is something completely new. The sword of the switch is amped and it does multiple swipes and it kind of looks like its own version of the energy blade hunter art from Generations Ultimate. The thing is we are not shown the full combo of his attack so we don't know when the combo begins or when it finishes. But the move looks insane and it's made me more excited for the Switch Axe. Switch Axe received a lot of good changes in Wilds and since I am a Switch Axe main I was hoping for second stage morph slash combo and soaring Wyvern Blade to return. But we will have to wait for new gameplay to be revealed and hopefully see its full moveset. Switch Axe is my top weapon in Sunbreak and it's going to be my main weapon in Wilds and I cannot wait to get a hold of it.
So these are my thoughts on all the weapon changes they have done for Monster to Wild. And I love most of the changes. The fact is, most weapons now have counters and adept dodges. Now make all the weapons more fun to play. And all of their movesets have been improved in some way. Which I'm happy with. Even though I haven't played bow or lance that much. I will be testing all 14 weapons when a demo is released to the public. More news for Wilds will be released in the next few weeks, since Gamescon will begin on the 20th. A lot of new details should be revealed, and hopefully we will finally get a release date for the demo and also the game. I think I have talked for long enough, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and comment down below which weapon will be your main in Monster to Wilds. So anyway, I will catch you guys at the next video. Thank you all for watching, and of course, happy hunting!